Good evening, friendos. Welcome and hello. It's time for Infinity Drive for Life. This is a multi-day charity stream in support of Extra Life, which in turn supports Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. In this particular case, this event is supporting Children's Wisconsin of Wauwatosa for their COVID-19 impact fund. Welcome and hello. Today is night two of four of Infinity Drive for Life. We've got three more Infinity Drives tonight. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for tonight in particular because we'll be doing uh, two of my most favorite uh, runs. Two of my most favorite androids. Um, so let's get a little color. Let's get a little color in here, huh? Uh, we're going to be starting with Aubergine. Far and away, my most favorite android. Um, the reason for that will become apparent uh, shortly as we get into the run. Uh, first, a few announcements. Uh, at the end of the round on Monday, two nights ago, we ended with 313 points towards the event extensions. That means we unlocked an extra round for next Monday on the 24th of August at 7 p.m. CDT, so that one's a go. We need to get to 500 points before we extend even further into the next round after that, which would be next Wednesday on the 26th of August at 7 p.m. CDT. The easiest way to do that, of course, is to throw in some donations. Every dollar means one extra point towards those point extensions there. We also have a few other things going on in stream and in game to bump those points up. In game, one point for every down I take in all of these runs. We've got that cumulative total set right now at 43 downs across three runs. I'm sure that number is going to hit triple digits long before the event is over. Um, just a fair warning for myself, probably, most importantly. Anytime we also encounter Embryo EX, about two-thirds, no, sorry, about three-fifths through each drive. That adds another five points to the, to the total. Every time we surge Justice, an important scoring tactic that hopefully we'll be able to pull off, that'll add ten points to the total. None of those so far, none of those. I'm looking forward to getting at least one tonight, that would be great. Every time we win a run that adds 20 points to the total, we've had two victories out of three runs so far. Really excited about that. It's really a very challenging run, so anytime we win, it's fantastic. Other on-stream happenings that will add to the point total. Any new followers we pick up uh, during the event will add five points each. So we've already had two new follows there, so thank you very much to those two. And any new subscribers will add 20 points each. So thank you to the two new subscribers we've had. That bumps up our total by 40 points. And then one point for every bits cheered, for every hundred bits cheered. We have 500 of those, so five more points there. So add all that to our total donation count of 165. That gets us to 313 points. 500, of course, to the next event extension. Looking forward to it. All right, that's enough opening chatter. Let's get into the first drive. We'll be playing as Aubergine. We are dressed for the occasion with our, our very nice Aubergine shirt. My goodness, I love this thing so much. All right. It's, it's, it's time to get going. It's time to get up in there in the Infinity Drive. Well, a, a real quickie recap on the basics of the game. This is Assault Android Cactus Plus. This is the Infinity Drive mode. Fight through 50 layers of waves of robots. Excuse me, robots. I, I like to say robots just because it's fun and cool. Um, in the hopes of getting to the end of layer 50, it's quite a challenge. This is not the primary mode of the game, the primary mode is just known as Campaign. That splits up the game into 25 discrete levels, whereas Infinity Drive is just one, pretty much one long level in uh, 50 different layers, of course. It's very much more of an endurance and marathon challenge than uh, the normal levels at, like, minute, minute and a half, two minutes, two and a half minutes at most each. And this is uh, a good, solid 50 minutes. Just go, 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 and hope that you do good. So tonight, our first run we are playing is Aubergine. Far and away my favorite android. In full part because of her weaponry. Instead of a, a, a normal just shooty gun as her primary weapon, she has this uh, little spinny salad shooter of death, affectionately known as Hilo. And you send him out, and he spins around, he shreds things up for you, and then he comes back. And then you keep sending him out to do some damage for you. And then her secondary is this neat little... Uh, Portable black hole maker, all well, the singularity. That pulls in things uh, at its event horizon and damages stuff that contacts it at the very center. Good for crowd control. Good range. Kind of mediocre damage, but it's really more about uh, controlling where enemies are than actually doing raw damage on its own. So, With that combination of weapons, I just find Aubergine the most fun to play. 
Oh, wow. A quick first down on layer four. That's embarrassing. That's okay. That's all right. That means we've got that all taken care of. Everything's out of the way. We don't need to worry about it anymore. Oh boy, we are we're taking some really silly hits here. Whilst we're kind of talking things up here. That's okay. But anyways, we are already on layer four. We've got another <coughs> 36 layer. No, oh, I, I can math. 46 layers to go yet. So it's going to be a nice, long infinity drive, and hopefully we win this one too. Like, despite Aubergine being my absolute favorite, she is certainly not the easiest, to, the easiest to play in any game mode, really. Just by, in large part, to her unique weaponry. She also happens to be the only character where the controls for her are different depending on whether you're playing with keyboard or mouse or controller, which I happen to be on. If you're using keyboard and mouse, you get a, a nice targeting reticle on the screen, depending on where your mouse cursor is at. And every time you fire, that's where uh, Hilo goes out to hover nearby. But with controller, your fire button sends Hilo out in the direction you're facing. And then releasing the fire button brings him back in. And then, to further kind of uh, set everything apart, if you're using the accessibility option of inverted fire, where it treats you as always firing unless you're holding the fire button. That's the inverted part. Uh, Hilo will always be going out to a maximum range, and then releasing the fire button would bring him back in. We're not using inverted fire. That messes with my mind too much. So we're using just normal normal fire with the gamepad, um, which is a very unique play experience, especially with Albertine. Wow, we are dropping chain all over the place, but that's okay. Getting over the... Uh, early run jitters, as I like to <laughs> use as my excuse for doing poorly. We've already taken our first down on, on layer 4, which is not not good, necessarily, but uh, it lets us get that uh, those first down shakes out real good. Aubergine is really the only android with the unique control scheme between keyboard and mouse and gamepad, um, which is interesting. And I will admit that uh, way back long ago when I was first starting to play this game, I really had a huge problem with trying to play well as Aubergine. But, me being stubborn, um, I did eventually stick to it enough where now she's just my absolute favorite to play as. Not that that's going to translate into an easy victory, mind you, but hey. I'd be I'd be okay with a very pleasant surprise. All right, layer seven. All right, so we are facing embryo. Missed that other battery. That's okay. It's pretty early. We don't need to really care about batteries so much yet. So, a quick recap on uh, the basic game mechanics. Up top center of the screen, there is our battery meter. In uh, most twin-stick shooters and most shooter games in general, you're given a, a fixed number of lives where as soon as you lose all their lives, that's it. That's game over. But in this case with our battery meter, as long as there's even a smidgen of anything left up there, we can keep going. We can take downs, we can take our time, we can do whatever. And it's not gonna matter. But, that doesn't mean we can just sit back and, and come what may. Uh, we need to be quick, because a full battery meter only really translates to about a minute which isn't a whole lot of time, considering this entire run goes about 50, 51, 52 minutes. So in order to keep that battery meter nice and full, we need to pick up battery drops from the enemies that come about every so often. Like right here. And we're gonna grab that thing, because we want more battery. When batteries drop is determined by the uh, amount of these little white energy pellets that enemies drop when they're destroyed. Little weapon, I think they're called bolts. That's the official name is. And every layer has a different threshold of the number of volts that need to drop before a battery pops. Since we're early on in the game, you know, single digit layers, it's a pretty low threshold, so we'll see a lot of batteries. We certainly won't be in, at any risk of losing this early on in the game. But as the layers go up, the thresholds get higher and higher, battery drops become fewer and farther between, and that means we need to play better. 
Or, more accurately, we need to play fast. So the more enemies we destroy, the more things they drop, the more batteries appear, and we can keep on going. Oof, almost took a dunk right there. As they tried to dump a mine on my head. But, we saw through their plan. We got through after that, okay. So the fact that we need to play faster and faster as the run goes on means uh, almost necessarily that we also need to play more and more dangerously. Uh, which can lead to some problems later on. If we play too dangerous, and we take too many dunks because we're playing dangerous, uh, then the likelihood of us winning goes uh, really, really down. And we don't want that. We don't want to lose. So we have to strike a, a really good balance between playing dangerous and just safe enough to make it through and also not lose. So we'll be adapting to that as best we can as we go along. We're already at layer 10. Already into double digits. That's fine. <coughs> the game is still rather pleasant towards us, though. It's not too upset that we've gotten this far. So we've taken these lasers pretty easy. La layer 10's a, a nice quick pop in, and as soon as you've gotten comfortable, it's pop back out. So, see you, Layer 10. So one little caveat to our secondary little black hole thing there is that uh, the strength of its pull diminishes rather rapidly with distance. And if enemies are kind of at the very fair edge of its pull radius, they'll just kind of freeze in place. Which is sometimes good, kind of keeps them all separated and away from you. But given the sort of mediocre range of our primary weapon, our, our now very large helo, um, it can be a little bit problematic trying to keep enemies kind of close enough to us so we can do a lot of damage. So we've got to be careful with our black hole placement. Hey, Kenny, hey, handmade weapon. Yes, unfortunately, you did miss the first down already. I take took a real quick dunk on layer four. Wasn't the greatest. Didn't feel good. Didn't feel good at all. Um, but that's where it is. That's where it is. See, even though we had, I think, all double-digit layers uh, in the previous night for first downs, it's like, uh, I think, a 22, a 10, and a 22. We've already had a single-digit layer down tonight at layer 4. And that's kind of the beauty of the variation of this game. Like, you can do super good sometimes, and then you can do super bad sometimes. And even though we took a, a real bad dunk on 4, I mean, this, this run could go really either way. We could win. We could win. Oh, we lost Chain there, because that dude was just kind of hanging out. Um, that's alright. We could win. Still. And even if we had, like, a super good early game, say we took no downs until layer 30 or something, we could still lose that run. Because, in a sense, Salt Andrew Cactus Plus, in particular, Infinity Drive is sort of like any old racing game. You can play yourself a good race, but it's really only the last lap that matters. I'm not quite sure what the last lap is considered here. Maybe layers like 35 through 50. But those are the ones that really count. So we're going to do our best to, uh, you know, play a good race regardless. You know, no matter what layer it is. We're obviously going to try not to take any dunks. Any downs or anything. Ooh, that guy got <laughs> dunked by his... By his buddy's missile there. Thanks, man. Thanks for that. But sometimes, uh, you know, silly dunks happen, and we just gotta get back up and, and try it again. So we gotta be careful when we use that black hole. If there are a bunch of mines strewn about, those things tend to get pulled more than most other enemies. So if we dump a black hole near ourselves and there are a whole bunch of mines just kind of floating around, we could be getting a mine sandwich real quick. And that's no good. Real good for containing enemies, but also real good for, for self-dunks, like almost that one, I guess. There's a dunk on layer 13. That's alright. That's uh, less terrible. We're coming up to Vespi. Vespi's on layer 15, so... 
We're gonna hopefully still maintain full weapon power by the time we get to 15, because Vespi is just no fun regardless. As long as we don't take another dunk before then, we'll be alright. So here's Vespi, and with a fully powered primary weapon, Zavi, versus Vespi is, uh, you know, usually a pretty soft touch. We gotta just keep on our toes a little bit so we don't get bum-rushed here by any of these wasp phases, because they have a tendency to do that sometimes. So there we go, that, that phase is no problem. So we're gonna stick around, stick back, grab some batteries protect ourselves. Especially at full power, Hilo can sort of be used as a as a little pseudo shield for us. However, the caveat to that is that the target given the priority damage for whoever happens to be within Halo Hilo's radius is the one closest to the center. So it's not like everybody within that radius takes damage at the same time. No. Only the one closest to the center takes damage, and as soon as that one dies, then the next one does, and the next one, and so on and so forth. It would be wildly more effective if all the enemies took damage at the same time. But just another thing we have to be aware of and control as we're going along here. Real good for dispatching these wasp cannons, though. Once you pop those open, the wasps are pretty weak the way they are. So they go down pretty quick, and then the next one gets hit, and the next one, the next one, etc, etc. Oh boy, this was almost a silly dunk there. <laughs> get real worried when things get very clustery, and I'm not prepared to handle them. A thousand chain, very nice. Let's keep that rolling. Keep that rolling real nice and good. Let's see layer 17s here. That conveyor belt to affect our movement, not good. We don't like that. That can mess with us a little bit. Oh boy, see? Like almost there. I'll grab an accelerate so we have less of a problem. Unfortunately, the conveyor belt can kind of mess with the uh, black hole a little bit too, but it seems to move just fast enough to keep it out of the black hole damage radius. Which is a problem if you're uh, kind of relying on it to do some damage for you. Let's see, I was, uh, have a good conception of where that laser was coming from, so I was hoping that it wasn't going to burn us immediately. But, one of the perks of the black hole is that you can fire and forget. I mean, you kind of have to fire and forget. Slap it down, let it do its work, and, you know, while it's softening some stuff up, go go to town with Hilo here. Ooh, that was a little bit of a dance. I'm surprised we got through that. A lot of things happen in there. Mm. See, now that dude intercepted my black hole shot with his mines there. I was hoping to plant it right in his chest. Ended up popping over the hole. Is uh, less useful. Because like the Hilo primary we've got going on, the black hole only damages the enemy closest to its center. And it's a relatively small hitbox, despite its visual size. So we have to be careful with that, too. And 
and the fact that it kind of visually warps everything around it makes it kind of difficult to see some of the targeting reticles on the ground for rockets or where bullets are going to end up. It's really a, a whole lot of educated guesswork sometimes to really play Aubergine effectively. But we'll do our best, of course. Dunk the big dudes with a, a black hole right in their chest. Work on the small ones around them. Eventually, we're going to have to get a little bit more fluid with our target prioritization. Just to make sure we're crowd controlling appropriately. But till things get super dicey, say around... 31, 32, 33. We can really just kind of take this at our lead. Have some fun. Have a few laughs, you know? Didn't even see that rocket incoming. Good thing I backed up. Like in the first night, we always want to make sure we're on the red colored layers. You see at the bottom there, our, our little layer counter, sitting at layer 20 right now. We are on red layer 20. We always want to be sticking on the red layers. Anytime we get knocked down, we get dropped back to a blue layer. And then we need to fight our way back up to red. Green layer on the intermediate. The only way to do that is to play through an entire wave of enemies perfectly. That means keeping our chain up in the top left going, as well as taking zero downs throughout. And then we advance to the next sort of layered color. Red, of course, being highest. So we're in a good spot right now. The perk to that is that red layers have more enemies. And I bet you're saying, whoa, hold on a second there, Mr. Bond. Why would you want more enemies? Doesn't that make things harder? It sure does. But, if you recall earlier when we were talking about the battery, more enemies? More little white weapon energy volt drops, more batteries. That'll be very important as we get later on here. Layer 20, the game's getting a little bit frustrated with us. It, it thinks we shouldn't be doing as well as we are. Um, so it's starting to pull out some more stops. It's starting to send more at us at a time. If this were an arcade game, this would be the time where it's uh, time to let the next person in line play. But, as it's not an arcade game, we're going to be here for a while. There's 21, our, our <laughs> quote-unquote friend, Conveyor Belt, is back. Not cool. I don't know who invited him. We want to get out of here as quick as possible. Like, any, any Conveyor Belts. In my anxious devotes, any conveyor belts, anything that affects your mobility in the game is just the worst. Conveyor belts, blue Fidos, the Petra Fidos that uh, tether you and move you around, both of those are bad. The only benefit to that is really we can target the blue Fidos, we can get them out of there as quickly as we possibly can. We can't do anything about the conveyor belt except uh, beat the layer and get out. Look at that guy, he's trying to tell us. Get out of here, man. Just get. Alright, there goes layer 21. See ya. I'm sure that conveyor belt will be back later. Mayhaps. On Casino Layer Act 2. So we're keeping the chain going 2500 plus. That's pretty nice. Not the best we've ever had, um, but pretty good. And there's plenty of run left to go. We're not even halfway through. So we could get that much higher. And that's what we're going to try to do. Alright. Rip to layer 21. Or was that 22? I think it was 22. And here's Justice. Here's Justice. And here's coming up where we can add a nice 10 points to our counter if we get the Justice Surge on his final phase. 
and surging is in kind of an advanced scoring thing, which we'll do a brief overview once things are safe to talk about in depth. I need to concentrate a little bit on this one. Try to set this up appropriately. Mm, I don't know if I got that. That's hard. That's hard to tell when I'm looking at like 20 bajillion different things. We'll have to roll that back and see if we got it. Unless somebody who's watching uh, can confirm. <laughs> that is, it's hard to judge when you get the when you get the surge and when you don't. Well, rip chain there because that dude was a little bit too tough. So that was what 2600 some. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. So if we did manage, to, oh, ouch, dunk. If we did manage to get that surge, that's what another 20 points. No, 10 points. That's another 10 points for our event extension. Oh my goodness, excuse me. Running into every bullet. So for the for the surge itself, I would have expected some number of points. Um, but my score isn't at the point I would expect it to be, so I don't think I got the surge. But I don't know exactly what that point cutoff is, so it's like, eh, very difficult to tell. Like, at least the runs the other night, it was easy to tell that I totally bungled the Surge, so no problem. But anyways, the Surge, since we're talking about it now. you notice in the top left, our little chain counter says chain 10x. Okay, that's great. We've maxed out the base chain multiplier at 10 times. Every now and again, you'll, you'll see it swap to a red number nearby, like a chain 12.5x or a chain 15x. That's when we're surging. And you surge when you destroy two enemies, or more, within a very short time period of each other. And then any time that you do that, any of the enemies involved in that surge, you get an extra 1.5 times multiplier applied to the chain bonus. So if you had a 10 times chain bonus, as we do now, it would become 15. And then you'd get that multiplier applied to the base score of all the enemies involved in the chain. So for enemies with a very high base score, if you surge them, you get a whole load of points. And the reason why that's particularly important for Justice, and why we call it out as the Justice Surge, is that Justice's base point total is several hundred thousand. So you take that base point total of several hundred thousand, apply that nice 15x bonus to it, that is a lot of points. That is multiple millions of points. No surge? Okay, thank you. Thank you for checking into that for me. So, rip that extra 10 points to our event extension. We did try. We did try. It's just very difficult to set up and, and do reliably. Or, no, I guess I should be more accurate about it. It's very difficult for me to set up and do reliably. Other exceptionally good players in this game can nail it, no problem. I cannot. Alright, so we're at layer 25, about halfway through. I didn't need that shutdown. I don't know why I grabbed it. I didn't need that one either. What are we doing? So we're halfway through layer-wise, but we're not exactly halfway through uh, enemy-wise. Because they really start throwing everything at you once you hit layer 40. I think layers 40 through 50 end up accounting for about a quarter of the total enemies in the entire run, despite being only a fifth of the total layers. So that gets to be a fun time, assuming we get that far, because there's no guarantee that we're going to get that far. Last time, we did twice with our starch and cactus runs. We were just a little bit short on our Hollywood. Like we got to layer, what, 39, right? We couldn't go no further, because we took a, a bad down at a bad time, and that was the end of that. So here's 26. Here's Casino Lair. Spinning conveyor belts back again. A couple holes to stop you from moving everywhere. Loads of mines, loads of blue fetcher fidos. Just a bad time all around. Really need to get off of this layer as soon as we can. It can be a little bit of a time sink. And a battery sink by extension. Especially when we get very ill-timed shutdowns like that. Ooh, could have taken a zap there. 
positioned our little helper firepower robots to block it a little bit, thankfully. Woo! That was some mines. Ooh, that was also some mines. Excuse me. Okay, back to a thousand chain. So that's a real good start on all this. We need to keep that going. We need to keep that going something good. On to layer 27. Nice. A nice layer. A nice layer, because it's nice and wide open, nice and flat, nothing's moving. No conveyor belts. Enemies are relatively dense, so it's a good recharge layer for batteries. Assuming you can move fast enough to make it worth it. And it ends all too soon. Here we are. We have advanced to 28. Now we've got some walls to deal with. Not quite as fun. Some big dudes hiding behind those walls. Luckily, one of the perks of, uh, of our nice primary weapon, Hilo, is that we can wrap it around the walls. Not have to try to go around all the time. Since we can't shoot through the walls, obviously. The next best thing is just kind of whip around with a little trick shot. So that's what we're going to do sometimes. We need to nuke something on the other side. Just slingshot Hilo around and hope that we get him. Layer 28 is where stuff starts getting a little long and drawn out. It just never seems to end. And that'll come into sharp relief once we hit layer 38. The longest of layers. Perhaps only second to layer 39, which is also long, but feels a little bit shorter for whatever reason. About right here where we start to take a few more power-ups. For safety. Mostly for safety. It's because we don't want to be getting close to the batteries to grab them. We want them to come to us so we grab an accelerator. Plus we need to keep our, our DPS pretty high. So we always want to have firepower active. And then if things get too dicey. Or if I'm just lazy. Grab a shutdown. Make things a little bit easier to handle. Oh, I dropped chain there because I did not focus fire on anything. Whoopsie! That was, what, 1500 chain? Not bad. But uh, not what we want to see this late in the game. We want to keep our chains going to keep the, the enemies nice and dense. Let's keep these batteries flowing. Goodness. There's a lot of mines coming from everywhere. I don't like it. Already back up to green layer 29, that's good. Next wave clear, we'll be back up to red. Exactly where we want to be and where we want to stay. This dude got caught on the wall for some reason, so we're gonna nuke him real quick before we forget. Try to keep our black holes always out and active. Crowd control. And bunching up the enemies nice and good so he'll tread them. Alright, so we're back to... Oh! We were back to red 29 for a very brief moment, and then we took a laser to the face. And another laser to the back. So that's good. Let's take a cluster of power-ups there and get back on our feet. Big boys on 29, I forgot about that. 
big blue dudes. The Buster Titans are are kind of mean. They want to have words with us and or fists, but we say no, no thank you. We send them packing and we say, all right, see you later. Losing a little bit of battery overall. We're not quite keeping it topped off like we were in the uh, in the early layers. Tell we're bleeding a little bit, but around layer 30, that's about what happens. By now, the game is getting a little bit upset with us. We should not be getting this far, it thinks. So it will now continue to pester us with blue fidos and mine cans, and Buster Titans. Drop batteries in unfortunate locations. That's alright, we're ready for this. By now we're all warmed up and we're ready to, to give the best we got to keep going. to use these walls to our advantage. Block a few bullets. And with Hilo rolling out always, we can kind of get around the corners a little bit better than most other androids. It does still block our little firepower assist bots here, which is unfortunate. But at least we can do some damage without being totally out of harm's way. Alright, 31. We're coming up to the important point in the run. Where we get to choose, well, sort of, whether or not we want to fight Embryo EX. And if we do manage to fight him, they're just plus five points to our point extension counter. And if we don't, well, rip those five points, I guess. But in order to fight Embryo EX, we need to have, or we need to be on, rather, a red layer when we get to the transition point between layer 31 and layer 32. And there's an easy way to tell us when we've kind of passed the point and it'll return on that. So there's a certain wave of enemies on this layer that uh, we affectionately call the Titan Gang. Where even if we were to t take it down immediately before the wave starts, not kind of like that, but pretty close, as long as we paid, played perfectly from then on, we would still be able to see Dark Embryo, or Embryo EX, rather. I mixed up my names for him. So we're still okay here. Titan Gank is soon? I think it's now, actually. So now, well, that may have killed it right there, because we dropped Chain. Um, we'll have to see. I'm not quite sure if we had already killed a few enemies in the lair. But uh, we'll see what's... Let's see what happens by the end of it. My gut says that we're not going to see Embryo yet. So I think there was a few enemies that we dispatched before breaking that chain there. Yeah, since we didn't go to green layer 31 there, I think that's right. So, rip Embryo EX. Uh, we will not be seeing him in this run. That's unfortunate, because I could have really used the full battery recharge for fighting him. Um, but we'll, we'll make do. We'll make do. So here we get to see a non-Embryo EX Layer 32. Nice and wide open, uh, like Layer 27 was, which is nice, um, but just a little bit stingier on batteries, so we're going to have a bit of a time trying to keep this going. Here's Layer 33. Again, bear belt's back. Didn't get enough of it back in Casino Lair. It's really a problem when these uh, red laser firing specters or reapers, I forget which one they're called. When they line up to charge their lasers at you, and then they get caught behind one of the walls, they get pulled along for the ride, and then their laser moves, which is a little bit hard to predict most times. So if we end up taking a silly down, 
because of that, it's not going to be that much of a surprise. So we'll probably prioritize the uh, laser shooters over most other things when they appear, just to avoid that situation. Since we are dealing with the conveyor belt situation, we'll want to keep our accelerate probably primed and ready. The annoyance of trying to fight the motion. It's kind of a late battery drop, and it got caught by the wall, so that's super cool. Thanks. Thanks for that, I guess. Buster Bros here trying to make me have a bad day. And this dude gets caught behind a chunk of wall. It's incredible. It's incredible sometimes, like the little tiny walls they get caught on. I'm moving a little slow, so we're gonna shut this down and try to dunk some things fast and get back on top of the battery. There we go. So we're entirely out of critical now, which is nice. Gives us a little bit of padding to work with. Not for too long though, we gotta keep on our toes. Oh, and not take a dunk to a self-induced uh, orbital factory. Goodness, so many lasers and, and mines and stuff that's going on. Wow, okay, this is not great. Excuse me. We need to get our stuff back in the line here. So that's a little better. We took a lot of battery drain there for being slow and taking, what was that, three quick dunks in a row? Not great. But we're past that point now. Keep everything corralled here. Stop these dudes from jumping at us, because they tend to push everything else towards us. We don't want that to happen. So that can be very surprising. Not in a good way. Not like a happy birthday surprise. Here, have some cake. Or like... Happy birthday. Here, have this mine. I got it just for you. And it's very thoughtful, but we'll have to decline. Jeez, dude's blocking my path all over the place. Fight my way back to the center, that's where all the power ups decided to take up residence. Got a good deal sharing the rent, apparently. Make sure the center doesn't disappear, otherwise, we lose all of those power ups that are sitting there. Be a bad deal. We did, just lost the one there, just unfortunate, but that's okay. We've got more where those came from. It's a 
very important to keep Accelerate going. Because that brings the batteries to us more rapidly. So we don't have to go out of our way to go get them. Especially when these dudes are jumping around, there's bullets flying everywhere. Lasers off the starboard bow, etc., etc. Ooh, that was a bit of a dance. Very dangerous, but uh, it worked, surprisingly. We're in a pretty good position right now. Red layer 36, and we seem to be gaining battery overall, which is nice. We've been playing well. Can't wait for the surprise dunk to prove myself wrong here. to a red layer 37. Okay, we're back to kind of hitting the hair edge of critical, which is mm, concerning, but not fatal just yet. Oh, I'm not sure why I took a dunk there. And a little bit too friendly with one of those green pegs. Now, we're in the blue layer 38, which is the absolute worst time to get a blue layer. This 38 is the layer that never ends. And will steal this run from us, probably, because that was a, a very late battery. A lot of power-ups to burn just there, and I didn't want to do that necessarily. Also, extremely late power or battery drops is not a good sign. I also need to get out of this corner, because that's resulting in very poorly positioned enemy spawns. dudes tend to spread out a little bit. Okay, so we're headed into red 39. That's good, but the damage has been done. And it'll be real dicey if we even make it out of this. And then grab a few shutdowns. We're going to try to shred everything we can. Kind of a late battery drop there. Still very dicey. Okay, I think we gained a little bit there, but we're not out of this yet. That's definitely better. But again, still not done. <laughs> still not done with this. Got a long haul to go. I'll let 
takes is really one unfortunate down to set us back. Now we're on to 40. Okay, so now things get extremely serious. The game is done dealing with us, and it wants us to stop immediately. Unfortunately for it, we will not stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Here's where we burn every power up in reach and just keep on rolling. Grab uh, an accelerate here. This is extremely slow. Thank you. Good lord. <laughs> that is very tough to deal with when we're plodding along at a very gentle walking pace. Almost out of critical, which at this point is is very cool and fun and also sort of impressive. Back up above a thousand chain, we're at red layers in the mid 40s. Everything's coming up Aubrey. Sometimes the toughest thing to manage are these two rotating walls here. Stuff gets caught behind them on the regular. Kind of got to clean up everything before you toddle off and try to do something else. Yeah, that was a bit of a late battery drop. I think we caught uh, kind of a very bad edge on that. It's not fatal, but... Um, I kind of want to not do that too much. Like here, too. Like, that was a late battery drop. Um, he was still not very happy with us. Luckily, we have enough power up saved up here. We should be able to just keep burning without uh, really paying too much attention to it. Now here we go, the big leaves. Layer 49, our final layer. Let's ride, let's burn, let's do everything we can to make things happen. Now here, running out of Accelerate is sort of problematic. Now we can't run around everything as uh, easily. Especially these dudes just continually jump towards us. Like, come on, man. Chill for just a hot second. But it looks like we are, in fact, in the clear. Oh, and we dropped Chain right at the end. How embarrassing. But there we are. <laughs> But there we are. <laughs> okay, not terrible. Not terrible, but not super good either. Um, I can be pleased with the victory. I can be pleased with the victory, if not the way in which it was achieved. So let's count up some numbers, shall we? That's another 11 downs. So that slaps our down count up to 54. Another 11 points there. Um, we did not see Embryo EX. We did not Surge Justice. Thank you for looking that up for me. We did win, though. So there's another 20 points there. Um, no new followers, subs, or bits. So nothing there. But we are that much closer now to the next extension at 500 points. 
Oh, looks like we did get a, a donation in there, though. Why didn't it show up on my thing? Did we, did we not? Okay, maybe we didn't. Okay, that's... I'm oh, sorry. That's a layover from the previous time. Sorry. I saw a different number than I expected, and uh, I got all excited. But anyways, this is, in fact, a charity stream, so if you'd like to donate, donate at Infinity Drive 4.life. That'll kick you over to Extra Life. Everything goes to... Uh, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals Extra Life does not take anything off the top. They're merely an organization to help facilitate donations here, as well as advocacy and, and all that sort of thing. Um, every dollar we receive in donations goes towards one point. One point towards event extensions, which our current extension threshold for the next day is 500. We are getting ever so much closer to it. That would add next week Wednesday to the list of days, since we've already got a bonus day headed up for Monday. I believe in us. I believe we can get to the 500 point extension there. But okay, we've hit the end of our aubergine run. Um, it's time to move on to the second one of the evening. So, that one happens to be, if aubergine is my first favorite android to play as, this next one is my second favorite. Just because her weaponry is so very interesting. We're gonna be playing as Licorice next. Unfortunately, I cannot dress the part on this one since a licorice shirt does not exist yet. So we're just gonna keep wearing the colors of, of, of Aubergine here for now. And we'll get everything else set up whilst we hydrate a little bit on the side as well. So let's get licorice colors flying. Boom. Okay. Have a little breather. Hydrate even more. Hydration is important, especially in these long runs. Like, my goodness. Forget to blink sometimes. It's, it's important to drink. I forgot to do my layer 27 stretch. That's what I was going to start doing, but I, we just kind of made it. We blazed through layer 27 so fast I didn't get a chance. Did not even get a chance. I think something is going on with my thing here that I need to, uh... I need to do a quick restart. I should still be streaming, but I'll need to, to do something here. So one moment while I hop off and fix things. And then we'll be back momentarily. Oh, nice. Android, Android, Android. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's fix that, too, whilst, uh, whilst we're waiting. Okay, sorry about that. I think something's a little fudgy with uh, how my donations thing is, is working right now. But I will say that my instinct was on the money. We did receive another $25 donation from Firetron. Simply saying, here's another $25. Thank you very much. Apologize it took me so long to get that one through. But, uh, something is going on that I don't quite fully understand. So, I will have to take a look at that later. In the meantime, however, um, it is time for our second run of the night. Gotta start with licorice here. Get us a licorice thing going here. So let's, let's go. Three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> so, licorice is probably my second favorite android to play as because her weapons are quite unique as well. Whereas Avi had Hilo and the Black Hole, licorice has got this uh, quite potent little cannon shot here. And then their secondary, which I'll show off very, very shortly here, is, is a wicked dash and slash. Like so. And that one's interesting in, in, in so much as you can use it several different ways. You can do one single large charge up slash, like so. It's got a huge radius and massive damage. Or you can do a quick and then a medium, which I failed to do there. A small and then a medium. Or you can do three quick small slashes. It's up to you to kind of determine 
when's the ideal time to use each type of slash. But when you begin the slash, and when she rockets over to stuff, you can cross over holes in the ground. You can dance to areas you normally wouldn't be able to dance to. Uh, you can't go through walls, unfortunately. It doesn't have that magic power. But it's just very unique and cool. And a very good set of weapons to, to deal with. It is a little finicky on the targeting. It'll try to target the enemy kind of closest to, uh, to a point that's of a moderate distance away from you. Um, but sometimes it's not the easiest to uh, get it to to cooperate all the time. I'm sure I'm going to take a fair few kind of silly downs, trying to target a slash into a spot it really doesn't want me to be. Right there, that, that nice like little quick triple slash gives you a lot of interesting things you can do with it. But the caveat to, to all this jumping and slashing and stuff like this is uh, you're not invincible as you're charging up the slash. You are invincible when you're slashing. Like, during the slash itself, you turn white and you're invincible. Um, but during the charge up, you are not. So you can take a, a real silly dunk um, while, you're, while you're charging up the perfect slash to deal with things. So usually it's better to get in quick, do the slash, and then get out instead of trying to do some some real kind of ridiculous shenanigans. Although I'm sure I'm still going to do real ridiculous shenanigans. Here we are, in layer 5 already. Soon we will deal with some very silly mines. And sometimes with licorice, lines can, or mines can be... Uh, a bit problematic, like there, almost. Good thing I panic swap to get out of there. Because targeting the mines with a slash is uh, difficult and also very ill-advised sometimes. <laughs> if you spend just like a quarter second too long charging up, that mine will explode and you'll take a dunk. Like right there, I didn't really need to grab that shutdown. It was just kind of in my way as I was swapping from Slash back to normal cannon here. Try to hang around in the center here because I know it's going to drop away. me that power up if I hadn't grabbed it, so just trying to think ahead a little bit on that. Ooh, that was almost a, a very silly dunk. Sometimes it takes a bit for the for the aim on the slash to kind of come into focus. I, I suppose this is another case where the controls for Licorice are a bit different. Oh my goodness. Dunked on layer 6 because I was trying to target something and a mine was rolling on it. Where uh, Licorice's controls might be a touch different with the gamepad than they are with keyboard and mouse. Since it does take her a small amount of time to turn, so when you're trying to target for a slash and you haven't quite pointed at the enemy, in full yet. Like she'll just sit there like she's waiting for a bus or something. But a dunk on six is slightly less embarrassing than a dunk on four, so we're already kind of doing better than our obby run. Liquid's primary fire, once it's fully powered up, really does some some really nice damage. Ooh, wow, that was almost very bad. We kind of had to dance in. We we slashed at the wrong time there. And then we didn't have a good target, so we had to dance really quick back in into the center there. But, see you later, Embryo. Once again, hardly put up a fight.
that doesn't matter. We're, we're okay with a with a tiny fight every now and again. So one kind of uh, exceedingly dangerous thing to do with your slash is, especially when you're fighting the oh my goodness, the big, the big blue titans, the Buster Titans. Depending on your targeting, um, you might end up dancing too close to them on the way over to slash them, and then they'll charge up their smash, right? And then they'll jump at just such a time where they completely avoid whatever attack you were going to do. So what I try to do is to dance behind them first, so it takes them time to turn around, and by that time, I've already done my slash, and they're, and they're hopefully gone. Um, it's really more of a, a timing and positioning and targeting thing than anything else. Very difficult to pull off consistently, especially when things start getting a little wild, and you can't put your full concentration on it. I just like pulling off those triple slashes so much. It's so clean and cool. Like, what a flourish. What a nice little detail. Of course, because of Licorice's uh, weaponry, especially her primary being kind of a, a, a relatively slow, hard-hitting cannon, the bane of her existence happens to be the tiniest enemies, the wasps. So if there's a big old group of them, and they're kind of spread out, it's kind of worthless to try to slash them. But then it's also super slow just to normally gun them down. You kind of gotta pick and choose your battles and hope that they, uh, they eat it while you're dealing with other things. It can be hard to dispatch the wasp canisters cleanly as well, considering they only break open if you shoot them a little bit. But, oh my goodness, I don't know what... I, I saw a mine explode, but I didn't think I'd taken it down from it, and then I got maybe capped by another one behind it or something. So, oops. But what was I saying? Alright, dealing with wasp cans is a, is a tricky challenge on its own, because there are ways to... With pretty much every character, there's a way to quickly destroy wasp cans. Of course, you gotta pop them and, and, and destroy all the wasps that uh, float out from inside. Most characters have a way to quickly dispatch. For Licorice, it's a bit tougher. Because ideally, what you want to do is swap to your secondary, get your slash ready, charge over to them, and have enough of it charged up to get rid of all the wasps in one go. But sometimes the targeting on the slash is such that you don't get quite close enough to the wasp can for it to break open. So instead of killing all the wasps that pop out, your slash ends up opening the can. And you've kind of done yourself a disservice by doing so poorly. Hopefully we won't see too much of that. Um, but it's always worth kind of going for, because cle clearing a wasp can really quick like that is, is very cool. It's very cool and effective, and does a great benefit for you. Oops, I didn't really need that shutdown. Silly. I didn't need that one either. It was just kind of in my way. Ah well. It's early enough where it doesn't matter if we burn a, a few power ups. Based on the heavy hittingness of uh, Licorice's primary here, it's even more beneficial for her to have the the firepower the firepower drones at all time. 
Because if the tiny wasps start coming out, just sweep back and forth with them and mostly take care of it without too much problem. Whereas with a, a more traditional character like Cactus, who has her assault rifle primary fire, that's quick and powerful enough to really deal with Wasp just on its own. Pretty quickly at that. Now we're dealing with pretty much Licorice's worst nightmare here. Just a whole mess of Wasp spread out. Dealing with them quickly would be extremely important once we get the later layers. Since we gotta go fast to keep batteries rolling, but we can't because the enemy set is just so poor for it. And these dudes are just flying around behind this wall, just taunting me. Dislike me. This dude too, like get out here! <laughs> oh, and I dropped chain because I was going for that guy, nice. Alright, good, 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 good show there. Good show, thanks. Vespi is kind of a, a weird case to deal with here. Because she's got so many wasps, which is a pain for Licorice, but as long as we keep this firepower up, we'll be good. Also, trying to full slash here is problematic because of her melee attack there. So usually the quick triple slash is the safest way to deal with that. Of course, I'm going to be probably a little cheeky and try to get the full slash on one of her next phases. Sometimes you just gotta get the right angle on it like that. Just catch her catch her in the backside a little bit. Oops, then I took a dunk to the wasp because I was wasn't paying attention really. Surging wasp is just terrible. Just catch it. Catch it so, so hard sometimes. Had to go with the the quick triple on both both slashes there just to stay safe, and I got dunked by a, a tiny enemy to go around anyways. So Oop, almost got me that time. But all right, so we're headed into blue th blue sixteen. Not great, not terrible, not the end of the world. I dropped chain there because the slash took too long. Very careful balancing act with timing. Sometimes the fact that we're having so much problem with it on 16 of all layers is uh, not exactly a good sign. Let's see there, that that was a good wasp cane clear. We're gonna try a few more of those. It really helps out to have firepower there, because then the firepower can top the can for you, and then the slash just obliterates everything. Nice and clean. But if they pop the can early, you can end up missing a, a couple of the wasps as they come out. A mess, left with a mess to clean up. Alright, under red 17. big mines around. Pro tip, don't try to slash those big mines. They'll make you pay for it. Usually, your slash invincibility will take care of it, but if you're off on your timing by just a little bit, sometimes it's, uh, it's uh, time to take a quick dunk. Double wasp can elimination there. And there, see the slash opened the can but didn't get any of the wasp inside. Unfortunate. 
just how it goes sometimes, though. It's a bit dangerous to do that full slash in the midst of everything that was happening there. Sometimes you have just enough health to squeak through, and then it looks rad seeing everything just evaporate where you stand. Pretty good and straightforward, just a few holes to deal with. But having Licorice as secondary that can dance across those is uh, real nice and handy when you gotta get somewhere in a hurry. Which is always. Something we do need to watch out for, however, is when we're doing multi slashes and we dance back on a second or a third slash into a position that's uh, kind of uncomfortable. Like right into an exploding mine, or a cluster of wasps that have just made themselves known. Not great, so hopefully we're going to avoid that. It's neat too, because at any time during the use of your slash, even when you're charging it up, you can uh, hit the button to swap back and take advantage of the invincibility that it gives you. Your slash wouldn't have gone off, of course, because you kind of canceled out of it. But uh, just in case things get a little bit too hairy, you might see me kind of panic swap back once or twice because I get a little scared. It's been known to happen. Luckily, the combination of a fully powered primary weapon plus firepower gives Licorice some really solid single target DPS, especially against those big boys that can absorb it all at once. And bosses, if you don't get too close. how to clear a room sometimes like that oh man so it looks so good it looks so extremely clean and cool and I lost both of those I was trying to stay in the middle long enough to, to cycle those power-ups through to something other than two shutdowns but unfortunately I got scared by the mines that were rolling in Shutdown to get. It must have just appeared right next to me. I 
I instinctively went towards it. Saw a new power up pop, like, ooh, I want it now! <laughs> Wasn't the one I was expecting. Positioned myself, unfortunately, there. I was trying to get in the middle of those two red titans. But uh, the targeting decided I wanted otherwise, apparently. Sometimes with Licorice, you want to leave a few enemies around just to give yourself a target for your slashes to get around corners, especially. Get around walls that find very inconveniently in your way. Justice is a bit easier with Licorice because you can normally target his opposite side and do a full slash without running a follow of his little personal security shield there. It might be a little tough to get the uh, to get the surge here, though. Yeah, I don't know that we're gonna get it. We ain't. <laughs> I tried to set up for it, but he ended up throwing his last head there towards the wide open center of the arena, so that was a, a no go there. So unfortunately, zero for two on surges tonight, so far. Let's see if we can get the third one with our third run later. case of the, uh, the targeting being a little off and being slow, dropped our chain around 2,000 or so. Not ideal. You see those dudes just kind of clustered around that wall. It's so ridiculous. Like, come on, get out, get over here. That mines that somehow managed to bounce around it. I bopped out of the slash there because I knew it would just open the can rather than getting everything inside. I don't know if it was... I don't know, it exploded a little bit too far towards me. I not know if it would have been worth it to keep going with that slash or just to board out and hope for the best later. Yeah, see there. He jumped and dodged the slash. So I was positioned but not perfectly. Try to jump either right beside him or behind him, so you get a little bit of time like that. Lost that power up, whatever it was. Ooh, that was a a poor choice to dance in the middle of there. Whoopsie. <laughs> Like, I made it out of it the first time, and then I decided to go in again. My luck did not hold the second time. That's alright. We can still afford... Even at halfway through, we can still afford the... The odd silly slip-up. Less so in about five or six layers' time, but... On 25, we still got some leeway. really much of a fan of the of the two slash solution, either the the one small and one medium or the one medium and then one small. Usually I have to go for either the one large or the three quick ones. Because I normally don't have the presence of mind to measure out a medium slash. It's kind of finicky. As far as uh, what counts for medium how those dudes end up back there. Ridiculous. 
It's kind of hard to measure out just a medium slash. It's just easier to do quick ones or one big one. Green layer 26, which isn't ideal. I'd prefer red for casino zone here, but what are you gonna do? We'll be to we'll be at red soon, regardless. Wow, that was a big cluster. Excuse me. Licorice's primary, even at lowest power, one of the bullets is enough to set off the mines with one shot. So it makes Licorice a little bit less of a problem to get back after taking a spill, depending on what kind of layer you're facing, what enemies are there. But generally, it's fairly easy. If, if you're dealing with a whole bunch of wasps, it's a, obviously a different story. <laughs> Since one bullet, one wasp, essentially. That was nice. We got all the turrets out of the center. Ooh, that was a little sketchy. Like that can burst right on us. Usually the swap back from slash to gun has enough invincibility to it where you'll be, where you'll be safe from a full can burst like that. But the timing has to be right. Otherwise, it doesn't work as well. It's gonna go for that... that accelerate that turned into a shutdown there, but that uh, big mine decided, no, I would in fact not be doing that. Boxed me out. Did a proper defensive play. Nice. Nice double cannon race there. Got my layer 27 stretch again. Okay. We'll, we'll get to a quieter part of 28 and then we'll take a, a brief moment to hydrate again. It's very important. Very important to stay hydrated. Unfortunately, I don't think layer 28 really has any quiet moments. Maybe right here, since it's sort of safe. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Better. Better, better. Now we're ready to take on the remainder of the run. Since we are rapidly approaching the time when the game becomes unhappy. It's all fun and games up to a certain point, and then it decides, nope, now it is time to be the serious. Interesting shutdown placement there. I probably wouldn't have gotten that on purpose. But I guess it worked, so whatever. Oh, shoot. <laughs> shoot, shoot, shoot. They got me fair and square on that one. Oh, and that one too. I was trying to sneak up and avoid the laser on the way through, but didn't quite do it. So 
See, now it becomes a bit problematic if we take a dunk, because we start such low weapon power. And trying to get through these hordes of everything is uh, a bit tougher. Oh, okay. I kind of moved right into that one. I expected it to bounce to my left, but it did not cooperate. Now we're left with kind of dinky cleanup again. First critical at 29 is kind of concerning. Not surprising because of how slow a recovery licorice can be most times. But uh, concerning nonetheless. And these dudes that just continually get stuck behind walls is mm, annoying. <laughs> so they can't decide which way to go, so they constantly turn around. They're always at the middle of the wall for some reason. Yikes. dude got in the way. And this is a problem. A whole bunch of busters with no firepower. Oh, and one of them jumped my slash. So that's a problem. I think I got both of them there. Or did he, he manage to jump away? What a jerk. Just get doggos grabbing us left, right, and center here, which is also stupid. Bad spots to be, and then of course all the power-ups are just spread to the seven winds here. Is that how many winds there are? Seven, right? I feel like there are more winds than that. I could be miscounting the winds. These doggos need to stop grabbing me. For as important as mobility is, in particular for licorice, then grabbing you is uh, problematic. He jumped away right before he took a slash, so thanks for that, buddy. Oh, uh, I ran into a rocket splat there. Oops. Accelerate. <laughs> All right. That's kind of a panic dance to get out of there. Ended up splashing these wasp cans all over the place, but we made it out. Accelerates. Wanted one of them to be a firepower. Just grab that one.
it's getting a little crowded up in here. A lot of lasers, a lot of, a lot of rings of bullets. Okay, probably for the best I'd landed on that shutdown. I think I would have gotten bopped during my charge. Coming up on Titan game here, so we might yet see Rio EX on this go around. Got a little bit of work to do before then. Uh, I think we just lost it there, because I lost chain. Well, never mind. No Embryo EX this time. <laughs> shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That should be so easy to do. It's just the timing is kind of messy. Unfortunately, no extra five points there. battery recharge for fight embryo EX. Go on to oof, blue layer 32 because I took a dumb dunk. Not a very good 32. Poorly timed dunk, plus uh, not getting in Braille EXs. Going to be more of a problem here than it was for our Aubergine run. But we can still pull this out by playing well. I hope here. Which is also not guaranteed. Nice! They, they stayed in place long enough for me to get that slash. Thank you. Very kind of them. That was a messy moment. It's just a messy layer overall. The rotating walls and the incredibly annoying number of wasp pans. Big dude was guarding the, the blue dog out there. Couldn't quite get it. Another chain drop. Very poorly timed one at that. End up on a blue 34 here. So the more blue layers we have from here on out, the less likely it is we're gonna win. Time for Accelerate to leave us. I was hoping to be moving faster and avoid the fall for those bullets, but that's right, it's still made down. Okay.
by a blue doggo as I was jumping there. So I couldn't get to the place I wanted to be for this lap. It's so ridiculous. So finicky sometimes. Um, what did I get popped by there? Um, this is a, a bad place to be. <laughs> to be blipping and critical, and then no firepower to, to bring it back quickly is a problem. This isn't looking good. Might be taking a, a dunk on Licorice as a whole here. We've still got some time to bring it back. Especially with all these mine cans to, to get our batteries back up here. Nice. That was real good. Mines, the lasers, the rockets, and the blue dog helmets. <laughs> Just a ridiculous amount of stuff to try to pay attention to at once. Alright, so now we're fully out of critical, which is kind of incredible this late in the game. I'm sure, we'll be back there very soon, though. It's a very. Very careful balance. Okay, that's not where I wanted to aim. I'm pretty sure I wasn't aiming down there, but the aim knows better than I do sometimes. Nice slash. Got them all in the right spot. There, there too, even though I got roped by the doggo. He actually may have helped me on that one. Didn't stop me from jumping too far. Swap back, save this there, otherwise we would have gotten toasted. Now we're really back on dancing on critical here, so easy come, easy go. Especially late game. And we're headed into red 37. It's a nice way to start 37. Let's see if we can keep it rolling. Pretty consistent on battery, which is good, but we really need to be gaining. Okay, so right there, the targeting kind of wimped out on me, so I ended up dropping chain. Bad place to do it. 38 is the worst place to do that. So we're going to hope that we've got enough battery built up that we can get back to red layer. 
without taking a huge m number of dunks on 38 here. The extended number of wasps here. And Licorice's not great ability to get rid of them is making things bad. Out of 38 and into red 39. Good. Not great. Especially with invariably this late battery. Spread out enemies and everything. And I know there's one power up behind the wall up there, which we're not going to be able to get to. Surprised we didn't get done up there. Um, okay. I'm not sure what dunked me there. I'm pretty sure I got to that factory before he was going to be a problem. But I've been wrong before. Come on! And then the targeting on that couldn't quite get around the center. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Got extremely little firepower. No firepowers in sight to help us. We're going to need a, a pity battery or two to help us through this. There's one. Okay, this looks like this is it's going to be it. Yep. And it popped all the way up there, so there's no way I was going to get back up there to grab it, even if it had popped like a second earlier. So, rip that run! <laughs> On 39, which isn't Layer of the Curse, but it's close enough to be a curse. So there's another 15 downs, so that'll take us up to, let's see. <laughs> Nice. A nice amount of downs for now. Didn't see Embryo EX, didn't Surge Justice, wasn't a victory. Rip. No other new stuff there. Man. Man, that's just a disappointment. My goodness. Like, come on. <laughs> like, come the H on here, you know? Ah, well. Ah, well, ah, well. All right, so that brings us up to uh, run three of the Eve. We're actually going back from kind of very uniquely weaponed androids to something a bit more traditional. Um, this one I do have the colors for, so pardon me a moment whilst uh, I partially strip. <laughs> and then maybe consider putting a shirt back on. So our final android of the evening going to be Lemon. Look at this little cutie. Got her little quadruple rocket launcher there going on. Let's get set here. Let's get set. Let's get set. All right. Nice and sunshiny yellow, very positive, very happy. Hopefully that means a, a good run result. One win, one loss. Not particularly surprised by that loss. It's very sketchy from like 34 onward. It was just not good. All right. So then let's get to lemon colors here.
Let's see, let's take a quick point tally. Yeah, let's see, 69, nice. 79, 139, 149, 189, 194, plus 190 in donations would be 384. 384 points out of 500, we just need another 116, if my math is right, and it sometimes is not. Another 116 points to get us to that fifth extension day, or second extension day, rather, the fifth day overall, which will be next Wednesday. Uh, the 26th? Yeah. Wednesday the 26th. 7 p.m. CDT, if we do indeed get to 500 points. Well, quickie recap, this is Infinity Drive for Life, multi-day charity stream supporting Extra Life, which in turn supports Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. This event in particular going to support Children's Wisconsin in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, to help them out with their COVID-19 impact fund. COVID-19, obviously a very serious pandemic, still raging across the globe, um, particularly strong here in the U.S. for reasons that we don't need to get into right now. Uh, just know that's very bad over here. So any little bit that you can spare, one buck, five bucks, whatever, would be greatly appreciated. And even if you can't donate, just hanging around, having a good time, contributing to the atmosphere is appreciated. So thank you very much. Whew, let's hydrate a bit before we get started. Ah, uh, always important to hydrate. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Okay, time to get started with our third and final drive of the evening. Playing as Lemon. There's always a popular meme for a long time that Lemon was the worst. And I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's true any longer after they did the balance patch like back in, was it 2017 I think? Where they buffed every character except for Shiitake and Starch. And now, uh, Lemon isn't nearly as bad as she once was. Um, Still not necessarily my favorite, but a, a very kind of traditional kind of character. He had a very you know, direct and, and usable weapon in, in both primary and secondary, actually. Their primary is this little spread shot that starts out rather puny, um, powers up, gets gets better spread and, and more DPS overall. Her secondary is this uh, rocket launcher, which does incredible damage. You have four shots of before you have to swap back around and recharge it. But you can choose how many you want to fire. You can fire one, two, three, or four. You don't have to use them all at once. You probably shouldn't use them all at once, in fact. So you have a spare in the canister, ready to go. So here we go with lemon. Layer two already, gee, how time flies. Already 4% through the run here. So her rockets are very powerful. They're not quite powerful enough to take down one of the big boys in one shot. At least not one of the bomber titans. The ones that Huck uh, mines at you. I think it does take down a blaster titan, the red ones, in one go. It does take a little bit more on the blue ones, the busters, as well. But still very powerful. Good amount of splash damage, too. Sometimes you can get some really nice corner trick shots or something. Get fired appropriately. Here we go, so we had, let's see, in an Aubergine run, we had our first dunk at four, right? Very embarrassing. Licorice run was our first dunk at six. Slightly less embarrassing, but still very much so. Let's see what we manage here. Kind of the things about Lemon I don't particularly like is that it's very hard to focus fire her primary. Unless you're really getting up in the grill. Which is very dangerous. But we'll do what we can here. Like most other androids, we always probably want to keep a firepower or two around. Just to up that DPS. Make up for all the spread that we're missing. Look at that. Look at that splash damage. Dunk two big boys and two rockets. Aim them properly. They're close enough to each other there. They're holding hands, being friends or something. Let's 
So Lemon, one of the initial four characters that's unlocked uh, before you play any of your standard campaign mode. There was a mine there? Excuse me. All right, well, we split the difference this time. Layer five <laughs> with the first dunk for Lemon. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So slightly less embarrassing than Aubergine, but more embarrassing than Licorice. Lemon, you'll never live this down. I didn't even see that sucker either. Like, that was a, a well camouflaged mine. Been hiding behind one of their buddies or something. Ah well. Well, now that the first down's out of the way, we ain't got nothing to worry about. Now it's smooth sailing from here on out. So I like to tell myself. Dang it, we lost two of those there. Not great. Oops, excuse me. Luckily, some of the kind of silly mine layers are less problematic with Lemon than others. Just by virtue of her gigantic spread at full power. Usually enough stray bullets hit him to explode them before they become a problem for you. Once we say hello to our good friend Vespi in about nine layers, we'll be doing a, a very fun and, and dangerous strat. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna get dunked here. Nope, we somehow managed to get through that. I'm mean, doing a very fun and dangerous strat against Vespi called Ball Strat. I don't want to spoil it just yet, as it as it looks really fun and cool. But just know that that's coming up in nine layers. But first, we got to get through Embryo, who will be showing up right now. In fact, big old tub of robot parts large hitbox for our rockets to slam into. Oh, you've had layer 15 for first down, huh? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You know, Vespi ball strats are, are very cool and fun, but they're also very dangerous. <laughs> Lemon's probably the most consistent with them, but it doesn't stop it from being dangerous regardless. Luckily, Embryo is not very dangerous at all, so rip him. See you next time. That's a nice aim there. Good order of operations on the, the rocket kills there. Turret first and then his buddy behind him. Even though we had such a problem with huge groups of wasps when we were playing with Licorice just earlier. With Lemon, not that much of a problem. Spread works real good. And if you time the rocket shots properly on a just open canister, they get erased. Like they never existed. I don't think we'll be doing many of those canister kills though. That's, that's tough to do. Especially with all the spread bullets and firepower to boot. But, we'll do our best to pull it off a couple times, just because it looks cool. Always one milling about. Dang old conveyor belt layers. Not the friendly ones. There's the dude over there. Yeah, he was behind a wall. So, ripped chain. Headed into blue 10. There's 
10's a real short there, though. One wave and we're good to go. On to green 11. That first rocket shot, I should have did. Even though they fire in a perfectly straight path, that relies on my aim being good, which is certainly not guaranteed. Pinned in the middle by all these mines. Contra spread gun. That's right. Contra spread gun's got nothing on this. Like, just look at how much we're painting the room with it. It's just a shame that it doesn't do very much damage, <laughs> shot for shot. Hey, Firetron. Hey, AI. How you doing? How you doing? Good to see you. Oops, rip chain there. See who's bouncing around. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And there's another dunk. Cool. Thanks, Mines! <laughs> Thank you so much! Yikes. Lots of silly chain drops going on here. That's alright. Best to get those out of the way right now, when it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't really matter at all. Because at layer 12, the, the game is slightly perturbed. But, uh, still kind of humoring you. It's like, your welcome isn't quite worn out yet. But it's like, yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap this up here soon. <laughs> but still, we got plenty of time. Plenty of time to make this work in our favor. Ooh, here. Easy, easy. Not playing very well with Lemon at the current juncture. Thirteen, so we're headed in the right direction. These dudes are gonna get caught behind the wall. Of course they are. Lanny, spamming wasp phase, pretty easy to dispatch. Liquefied as soon as they appear. rocks. I wasn't quite sure of my aim going for those other factories alongside the way there. Oh, I stepped a little bit too far. I was trying to sneak through. I'm hoping that the laser was going to go away quick enough, but it did not. I look rather the fool. Right, enough of that. <laughs> okay, Vespi time. Ball strat time. Here we go. Ready? Bonk. 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 <laughs> Easy and fun. Easy and fun. Unfortunately, this particular strategy does not work on the Switch version of the game. Because the collision of Vespi's ball is slightly different. Surprise me. Oh, okay. I was about to say, why aren't we taking a dunk there? She got us on the second one. 
but the collision on the Switch version is such that you cannot stand in the middle of Vespi's ball there, so the strat doesn't work. But on any other console version and the PC version, it works fine. Of course, if I don't take dumb dunks, just period. And I'm probably not going to get it here. Oh, I might get it here, actually. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, all right. Poorly executed, but you get the idea. Ooh, there it was. I mean, I think it's still Unity cross-platform across everything. It's just that they had to dial down some of the collision detections on Switch to make it playable. Lower power of the console and all that. So unfortunately, the Vespi ball strat was one of the casualties. At least I think so. Last I tried it, I don't think it worked too well. But, anyways. Vespi ball strat should be very easy with Lemon. Obviously, I did not do it very much justice there. Um, it's very easy with another android that we will see on the third night, on Friday. Um, there are technically ball strats with every android, but I only know two of them well enough to, to be somewhat competent in executing them. Wow, that's getting a little toasty there. Except most of the other ball strats, except for Lemon and the other one we'll be playing on Friday, uh, most of the other ones do not involve getting in the center of her ball, but kind of riding the edge of it. Ouch! Excuse me. Pretty bad now, so we're in blue 17. So, for example, we could have done a ball stat or ball strat with Aubergine earlier in the evening. Works best with a fully powered helo, which is what we had going into the fight. Where you just kind of start off just on any portion on the outside of Vespi's ball and just kind of circle around really quickly. And helo is generally enough to clean up all the wasps. It's just a little bit finicky, so I didn't want to try it. Same kind of thing for Cactus. With her flamethrower, you ride the edge of Vespi's ball and just torch the heck out of any wasp that comes near you. That one's finicky because you have to meter out how much flamethrower you have to use to make it viable. And I can't do that, so I didn't try it. Ooh, ooh, run, run into that laser. Holly is similar, although a somewhat less effective. You can use a fully powered uh, primary or fully powered spread gun to do the same thing. You kind of ride the edge and, and nuke all the wasps that way. Very finicky because you have to nuke them in the in the right order, so you don't get hit. See, who's our who's our other android up one day? I'm trying to think about. It. I can't remember. Is Cactus Holly and Starch? Starch is kind of one of the easier oddball strats because her fully powered laser does a pretty good job at keeping the wasps in check. We'll see another android on Friday that has kind of a similar ball strat that rides the edge. That one's also a little finicky, so I won't be doing that one. But there is also just the other normal ball strat one on Friday that we'll definitely do, because that one's fun. That one's fun and relatively easy to do. A little, little teaser for Friday.
Alright, so we're back up the layer. Red layer 20. Exactly where we want to be. The game has started to decide that uh, passive aggressive suggestions to, to make me leave are not really working how they want it to. So they're going to ramp up and, and get a little bit more direct about things. Luckily, we are the stubborn sort and will refuse to listen and just go ahead and overstay our welcome all over the place. There's the, the quick wasp can nuke strats there. Just kind of stroll casually into the center, wait for it to pop open all around you, and then pop off a rocket. A little bit hard to do, requires some fire control. But when they're just all lined up like that, it feels super good. Inadvisable to try that against mine cans, though. Uh, you will definitely get popped. Ah, not so fast enough to get over to those. Um, okay, he managed to curve his little damage wave around there, and I don't enjoy that. I mean, well done, well played, but still kind of annoying. So back to blue layer 21. Fair belts back, our favorite. See you later. Good. Annoying butt conveyor belt. Up to red layer 22. Back in action. Um, okay. Did I just walk into a spread of bullets? I think I did. Everything was exploding around me, so of course there was something hiding there. Back down to blue 22. Walk. That's right, we should be able to hit red before we get back to 23. So... Or maybe not. Well, at least we've got full chain going into, into justice, so... Possible good score here. Another possible... Uh, justice surge, which will net us... 10 points for the event extension point counter. Let's see if we set it up properly. Not easy with Lemon. Her lack of concentrated fire on the primary is a real problem. So stick to the wall, I think, will be alright. Here. Nope. The head popped on me before I was ready for it, so... No justice surge for Lemon, either. Rip all surges tonight. Ah, well. I knew I wasn't going to get many of them, but I'd really like to get at least one. My goodness. Oh, they are boxing me in pretty good there. The lineup of three super mines, just daring me to cross that picket line. <laughs> Jerks. Okay. 
two silly downs there end up in blue 24. Luckily, we're still in the portion of the game where it doesn't really matter if we take a, a silly dunk every now and again. Because we can recover quite easily. But that doesn't mean we should be lazy about it. We still need to at least sort of have our wits about us. Just didn't need that second shutdown. It's Poor spawn, put us right in our, put it right in our way. Just kind of grabbed it on our way through. Battery over here. All right, red twenty-five, back in. Let's not drop it immediately. Please. Dropping in with that shutdown. Very good. Dicey center to leave like that. That lineup of turrets is uh, difficult to predict sometimes. I'm surprised I left it that dirty. Alright. Revenge of the Return of Casino Lair. Red 26. Real good. Real dense. But highly dangerous. Without an accelerate. My goodness, please. that accelerate primed and ready. I do not want to lose that one. Floating around on the beer belt here. Ooh, boy. That mine can pop in there. Not great. <laughs> it surprised me. Gave me a little spook. Need that stuff. Don't need any surprises here. I was a very clean 26 though, so I will take the wins where we can get them. We'll take that coward shutdown. I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> Like, it's a nice wide open layer. Sure. There's just so many mean things about it. Oh, alright. Layer 27 stretch. <laughs> Remembered it this time. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ah. Ah. Uh. Important to hydrate. Important to hydrate. 
Not sure if a resub counts, but there you go. Oh, uh, sure. Why don't we count a resub? We'll count a resub. Why not? I ain't picky. So thank you very much. We will put that extra 20 points towards the uh, event extension there once we're all finished here. Much appreci. Much appreci. Shut down invincibility rides again. Got him out of there. His little tiny friends there kept blocking my rocket shots. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> Play fair. Alright, that's a, that's a lot of big things happening. Let's not deal with any of that. Ooh. Mm, he caught me looking there. I had to panic swap to not take a face full of laser. Because that definitely would have been a down. Kind of a knee jerk instinct sometimes than panic swaps, but every now and again, it'll save your life. Please, mines. They're blocking my approach to that battery. Like, come on. Doggos, no. No! <laughs> that was a lot of dancing! That was just swap after swap to get through that just absolute trash fire. And this dude's caught over there. Look, look. Okay, we did not drop chain at that time. Oof. That was extremely stressful. A lot of mean things happening on this layer. Red 29 is no F. No joke here. My goodness. It's trying its hardest to now encourage me to move along. Very sharp words. But again, I must say no. We shall not be moving along. We shall be staying. Oh, excuse me, sirs. <laughs> Explosion of color and noise. Alright, that was good grouping. Big dude just kind of hanging around next to each other. Did not anticipate the splash damage. Maybe next time they will have learned. Okay, I shut down into red 30. I guess effective. Not exactly what I was going for. That spread out more than it needed to. That was perfect, though. That nice splash damage around the corner. 
got the mine can popped open in the second one, cleaned him nice up. This dude in the center needs to go away now. <laughs> like, please. big stuff. Missing that firepower for so long is not good, because now we really need the ability to focus down some of these things if they spawn in a, a very unfortunate order. Especially if these mines are boxing me out everywhere. got me around the corner there. Anything mobility affecting is just, like, come on. I know I complain about it a lot, but that's only because it really, really stinks. Okay. Red 31. So soon, we'll need to make a decision, or have it made for us, rather. We'll be seeing Embryo EX at all tonight. Popping five more points on that event extension counter. Here's hoping. So we uh, had a couple unfortunate screw ups on the previous two runs that uh, robbed us of seeing Embryo EX. Here's hoping we do not repeat that a third time. Even though we did win once without uh, a visit from good old Dark Egg, so it's really hit or miss as to whether or not it's really required. Well, rip chain there. It's still salvageable, but that was a really bad spawn order. Gave us a problem. Okay, I believe this is not Titan Gang just yet. Those late spawns for those dudes. Here's Titan Gank. And there goes five of them, six of them, seven of them. So they're not happy with me now. They're just like, get out! I'm like, no, you can't tell me what to do. So there's Titan Gank. Come and gone. Not guaranteed Dark Embryo yet. We gotta finish up the rest of this wave without dropping chain. Get back to Red Layer before the transition to 32. Looks like we're clean and clear there. So, hello, Embryo EX. How you doing? There's a sighting for this eve. Quite horrendous patterns compared to his lighter metal brethren. Brother? Companion? Fellow production line spawn, I suppose shouldn't be much of a problem here, as long as we keep our wits about us. I'm gonna take and shut down here, because I do not enjoy that phase. Easy peasy. Keep our firepower here, though. Okay, good. I guess that phase in particular gets dicier the longer it goes on, so I'm glad we dunked it early. Now, I just need to finish this up without ducking into the spread there. Very good. Very good Embryo EX fight. Not perfectly executed, but well enough executed that we've got me maintain chain here. So, red 33. Not exactly an ideal layer since we're dealing with your conveyor belt again. Walls on top of everything. But better to have it as red form than green form. Or blue form. More enemies. More batteries. More chance of surviving with a reasonable amount. Shut 
that laser alive for a bit so it can toast some of the wasps. It's a good idea, but now that one needs to go. Accelerated firepower back. This is gonna get real messy. Playing this nice and clean right now. I like it. it. Makes me very happy and gives me hope that we can manage a win out of this, but like any good racing game, it's not all the laps leading up to the final lap that make a difference. It's really only the final lap that counts. My goodness, it's staying away from me for some reason. Getting dicey. There's a lot of a lot of big mines chasing me around there. I don't need that. A lot of jumbo fighters shooting off rockets everywhere. Equally not good. Luckily, lots of mine cans. Oh, that one was not so good. <laughs> the hero mine shot out sideways and tagged me. Excuse, excuse me. So, unfortunately, down to blue 34 now, a very ill-timed blue layer. We need to bring this back post-haste. Fudge, that one almost got me. <laughs> Alright, our first little blip of critical there. In 34, not so bad. Like, pretty good. To have our, our first little blip of critical there, but... I would have preferred not to have had it at all. Even so. Alright, back up to red 34. To make something out of this. Okay, the red 35. Nice shutdown. We got most of the big ones as they were phasing in there. That's a lot of spread. Excuse me. A lot of spread. Way more than we need to deal with here. A lot of rockets falling out. Where the heck were all those coming from? Excuse me. back out of critical. A little blip or two there. There we go. Now we're entirely out of it. Um, okay. Caught a spread right in the face. Hopefully that battery was already on the field. What? Come on, man. Okay, we don't need to be taking the multiple docks on 36. That's, uh, not good. It's 
Big reds in the center to just catch a face full of spread from them. Rip. battery drop there for some reason. Thanks. <sighs> drop chain because that can was late to phase in. Ugh. That's not good. back to the red layer not staying on blue. when things start getting a little tight, the music starts uh, phasing out as you get closer and closer to losing. It makes it all the more tense. Alright, so we're back up to red 37. That's something. We're gaining a little bit of battery. Curse. Cursed layer of 38. Starting it at red, which is good. Maximum enemies for maximum battery. for that one. Extremely ill-timed. This is looking a little sketchy. We're going kind of slow, even on a red layer. We have a good transition to red 39. Well timed, right after, right off the battery. So we might be better here. some of these red lasers alive to help me out. We can. Okay. Keeping the battery in good range here. Still no guarantees, of course. Accelerate going now. So we can grab a battery from halfway across the way without running up to give it a hug. Okay, 
good. We're definitely gaining battery there. That's good. Now on to 40. Here we go. Now the game is seriously considering filing a restraining order against us. But, uh, we will avoid getting served, hopefully. All time shut down into red 41. Not eat these spreads, please. Didn't need the double shutdown, but I guess it was just on the way. Dang, I missed him. Okay, just barely didn't drop chain there. That would have been slightly disastrous if that had happened. Doggo needs to stop grabbing me. Dang it. Um, bad, 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 bad. Okay, we might still be okay here because that was a lucky drop. I was trying to grab that shutdown at the middle, but that doggo kept roping me. Possible to get over there on time. Any of these blue layers in the last 10 is just... Not good. Played it fast and loose on the uh, shutdown invincibility there, but we needed to get over there. Okay, back to red 45. Better. Still no guarantees because of that dunk on 42. Now we need Accelerate because if it gets caught behind one of these walls... in for that blue. Oh wow, that was a stretch of a dance. But we made it. Ah, I lost another one there. These walls are just eating my power up. It's left, right, and center. Okay, good. I need to keep my firepower going as much as I'd love to just burn through all these blues that are appearing. Without firepower, we're kind of sunk. Oh, wow. Good mine can dunk there. Ah, sugar. That's not good. We got kind of lucky that they all kind of coalesced in the middle there. We still, still got it. Okay, now. Bonk. Whoo, boy, that was <laughs> was a little sketchy at the end. Like, my goodness. Was not liking how that was going in 48 and above, but there we go. A second win on the evening is pretty good. We are now four for six across both days. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And then because you doubled down on Lemon. Well, good, good thing you did. Good thing you did. That'll earn you some big puntos. All right, let's, let's tick up some numbers here. 16 more downs, unfortunately, will put us out of nice territory. 
Um, so 69 plus 16 will be 79, 85, right? We did see an Embryo EX this time, right? Memory serves, we did, yeah. Uh, no Justice Surge yet, my goodness. Another victory, though. Four victories, pretty good. And we're gonna count that reset as one, too, so there's another 20 pointos. Puntos, pointos, whatever. So there we go. That puts us, that puts us pretty close to 500, methinks. So let's see, let's do let's do a quick add up here. 85 plus 15, it's a hundo, 180, 190, 250, 255, plus 190 from donations would be, let's see, 255, 355, 445? Yeah. 445 points out of 500. And we've got two more nights to get that up to 500 to add a add another bonus day. I think we can do that. That's uh that seems like pretty easy, right? Let's hope it's Mostly from donations rather than me taking downs, though. Please, please, please. Well, good. Well, good. So we followed the same pattern as the first night with a win-loss win, with tonight's win-loss win. Um, I'm not surprised by the licorice loss, and I think we lost with Holly on 39 as well, didn't we? Yeah, so we're really following the pattern. It's pretty good. I don't know that we're going to repeat that pattern a third time uh, come Friday night, but I guess we'll just have to see. But again, this is Infinity Drive for Life, a charity stream spread across multiple days to benefit Extra Life, which benefits Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, which in this case will benefit Children's Wisconsin and Wauwatosa to help out with their COVID-19 impact fund. Raised $190 so far. Thank you very much for all your generosity. Hope to pull in more. Our next day will be this coming Friday, 21st of August at 7 p.m. CDT. Now, the only caveat to that is that I am on call for my day job that evening, so if things get hairy, I might need to duck out early, which is kind of bad. Um, but we'll definitely, if that happens, we'll definitely make it up uh, probably on the following Monday uh, if we need to cut out from a run early. But let's see, coming up on Friday, we have the remaining three in our pack of nine androids. We'll have Shiitake, Coral, and Peanut. So, we had tonight with two of my most favorite androids. And we'll be going into Friday with two of my least favorite androids. So we'll see what kind of swing is going to happen there. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with just one clear out of all those, honestly. Like, keep it a nice 67% clear rate through nine runs. That's pretty, pretty freaking solid, honestly. But anyways, we're going to call it right there. Uh... Next day, of course, as I just mentioned, it'll be Friday night, 21st of August, 7 p.m. CDT, normal start time. We've already unlocked bonus day number four, which will be next Monday, 24th August, 7 p.m. CDT, and we're getting real close to that 500-point extension for day five, which would be next Wednesday, 26th August, at 7 p.m. CDT. But that'll do it for tonight. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you on Friday. Bye-bye.